All right, welcome to Arise and Shine with Jeanette and Sandy. Yay! Hey, hey, how's everybody? We're doing <laughs> Hebrews 5 today. Oh, whoops. <clears throat> with my hands up. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah so this is it's getting more interesting huh? yes. and I were like this is we're like on an archaeological dig yes we're gonna pull out some yeah. nuggets this is gonna be really good so, this is an exciting one in Hebrews um so I'm gonna pray us in real quick mm -hmm. so we understand um, everything that we're reading so um yeah Hebrews 5 dear Lord Heavenly Father thank you God for this time right now, Jesus, and um, help us to understand Hebrews 5, God, as we go through it, and we try to explain some points to the women here, and um, just bless this time together, Lord, and bless our study that'll be coming up on Thursday after this. So thank you so much, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All righty, so I'm going to start off this time. And I'm going to start off by reading. So I've got one. You want me to take one through 11, you said? Sure. Okay. So for every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. Now that's talking about the priest. Because of this, he is required as for the people so also for himself to offer sacri sacrifices for sins. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, now remember this, um, girls, uh, we read this back in Hebrews um, first chapter. You are my son. Today, today I have begotten you. And and then now this, I don't think it said this back then, um, as he also says in, an, in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, though he, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. Oh, you've gotten, you've gotten my, my spot, but that's okay. Oh, oh that's right. Sorry. <laughs> Went up to 10. Anyway, we are kind of tall. <laughs> I'm going to let Jeanette explain that, but it's true because in a way, this is so hard to like really grasp you guys. I mean, one, on one hand, they're talking, um, the Bible's talking about um, the high priests and the order of Melchizedek and Melchizedek himself. And then all of a sudden it's like Jesus Christ. So let's start with, um, with, let's start with the high priest. So we know that the high priest, again, so priests <clears throat> take you to is the go what's the go between in the old testament between yourself and god um and then fast forwarding to the new testament we don't need that anymore because our high priest is jesus christ yeah. so the high priest back then um and if we kind of like jump so if we look at five the high priests were you know they they, they offered both gifts and sacrifices for sins um, they can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray. Um, but if you notice in chap, um, in verse 2, it says, since he himself is also subject to weakness. So the priest himself had to also, we've talked about this before, but the priest himself was not a perfect man. So he himself had to go into the temple and offer sacrifices for himself first. He had to get basically clean before he could help anybody else, take anybody else to, to God. So um, it just shows you how a priest is a man. A priest is just a man. A high, you know. So um, Can I interject? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the high priest, though, he was yes. in charge of all the other priests. Oh, that's true. And then yeah. he was the one that had the fancy garments. Mm. He had that breastplate, and he yeah. had the thing on his on his shoulders with the different um, stones, which reminded him 
that he represented all the 12 tribes of Israel. That's a, mm -hmm. that's a, the weight on his okay. shoulders and the weight on his heart. So he was supposed to have compassion yeah. for for everybody in the in okay. the nation of Israel. Yeah. It oh, reminds me of when we did the Ephesians Armor of God. That's exactly. right. Please the armor girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So what did the other guys wear? Like sackcloth? <laughs> they had different what did the priestly, priests but this, wear? This, these guys had that special one just to remind them. Yeah. Know? So the twelve tribes would be by their heart and on their yeah. shoulders. Yeah. yeah. So oh. they knew the responsibility. They had a huge responsibility. Yeah. They did. They did. So um and no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. So we're going to go into it. We're just starting, you guys. Um, when we get to like chapter seven, we're really going to get into, I think we'll probably really get into the details there and that we'll be able to explain even more about the difference between the high priest, the priest, the, 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 the Levitical line, yeah. sorry, the um, er Aaronic priesthood. And um, so there's just a lot, you know, right, coming out of right. So you know that the, the Levites were the priests, but of those were three three sons: Gershon, Kohath, Merari, and each of those had uh, work in the temple. But the Kohath line was the Aaron's line, which was the okay. high priest. Only from Aaron's line could the high priest come from. Okay. And that's why it does say here, um, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but was he who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And that is God. You are my son, today I have begotten you. So um, let's talk a little bit. Um, let's go to, oh, six, that's where I'm trying to get. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So, I'm sure you've all heard of Melchizedek, and there's just a lot of speculation going on out there about Melchizedek. Um, I actually, you know, when I didn't think too much about it, I also thought Melchizedek was was Jesus himself. I didn't, you know, like incarnate, and I was wrong, <laughs> probably. Yeah, no, I was it's wrong, a common, but that's a common thought, though. It I is mean, from scholars, thought. from scholars. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know, years ago, it's become more clarified lately, but... Um, just so just so you know, Melchizedek was, if we go back to, if you could all look it up in Genesis 14, and that's Genesis 14, 18, I believe to 21. And I have my little bookmark there, but now it's gone. Okay, hang on. Okay, yep. So I'm going to read that. So Melchizedek was an actual king of Salem. Um, brought out, He brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemy, your enemies into your hand. So the special thing about um, Melchizedek is that he definitely was a real person, but he also was a high priest, and then he also was... Um, oh my gosh, my brain just went dead. He was a high. He he, he was a priest, and he was a king. Yes, those two things. He was a high priest and he was a king. And who else is like that? I'd say Jesus. And right? so this is why the comparison. So mm -hmm. later the comparison is that Jesus also obviously is king of kings and he also is the high priest. And then we're going to go into it. Yeah, I said I'm not going to talk myself yeah, I know into it's it, exciting. But, uh... <laughs> Chapter 7, we got to wait a little yeah, bit. Because you yeah. said you said this king of sin. I mean, he just so let me tell you some cool, interesting facts real quick about Melchizedek, the Old Testament M Melchizedek. What a, it's just a, a mouthful. But um, so only three books of the Bible mention him. There's just it's a it's a mystery, really. Um, he has no recorded family like there's no history. There's no history on this guy like re recorded. Um, and, and that's that's really interesting because what did you say that you said the high priest can only come from the air the, the line of Aaron right yeah so God has to appoint not. him and okay. Melchizedek is considered through Abraham the patriarch as a high priest yeah and his name his Hebrew name means king of righteousness hmm. okay and 
yes and so he was greater it says he was greater than abraham and aaron so right. he was around you know so he was in abraham's time um and the order of melchizedek and that's a real interesting thing about it is that in hebrews it says you know it's royal and it's everlasting so when it's mentioned not that it's mentioned a lot i mean it is a it's an everlasting royal priesthood right so um it is worth looking into so there are some, you know, sects out there uh, that, and that's S-E-C-T-S, that that kind of look at that and, and you know, pe people just come up with, with some crazy stuff. But I just wanted to talk about that. So that is the, the main comparison to Melchizedek to, for Jesus Christ is, again, Jesus Christ is king of kings, and he's also... Um, our high priest remember that we talked about that last week mm -hmm. that jesus is the only one that paid for all of our sins once and for all at the cross and so after jesus i mean we don't he is the royal high priest forever and ever it's everlasting and um no wonder there's just the the two comparables there i mean you just can't so I do get it. I do get why why the why it's written like this, mm -hmm. but um, it just kind of blows your mind. So um, I don't think I have. Is there anything else that I have to talk about? I, so, I think it's it's uh, when it talks about um, he offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears. Yeah, um, that was Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm. and what's pretty cool about this is the obedience factor mm -hmm. is that he prays to God that his cup could be removed but it's not going to be and what does he do he obeys so he knows um, he knows what it's like to to be in a tough situation but choose obedience to God instead of what what Jesus wants and so that's huge and kind of a life lesson from it is um, suffering is, was used to teach Jesus. Um, and if it's good enough to teach the son of God, we shouldn't despise this tool. Ouch. Oh, oh. Cry, cry as instruction for our life. Yeah. 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 And I guess I just just like finishing mine off because there's not much to say other than Jeanette and I were talking before we turned this on that it's just interesting how, what did you say? You said that it's just like, well, all of Hebrews so far, it's, it's just explaining how Jesus is just the perfect, basically he is, he's the perfect savior. He's the perfect sacrifice. Right. Um, and high priest. he's the high priest. He's higher. I mean, every chapter is just saying how he's just over and above everything. So, you know, there's not much to say about that and, and that's that's why the beginning of chapter five is just about the high priest and how that high priest is just understanding that that high priest is just above and over everything in the new testament and then jesus christ is over and above everything um, i'm sorry did i say new testament yeah, old testament it, yeah we get it yeah, you, know. yeah, you guys get it <laughs> but in the new testament it's 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 all about jesus so um that and then Jeanette's going to talk about something different. Uh, chapter five is not very long. No, it's, it's a quick read, but it's but action so packed. It's, action it, packed. It is action packed, and we're yeah. just getting started. <laughs> yeah. So, so as a segue from my part, from from Jesus, the the high priest is all part of his salvation. That mm -hmm. Jesus is the author of salvation, mm -hmm. and he's the only one. We can't we can't write the book. <laughs> it was already done. We can't do anything to make it happen. Yeah. So Only you got Jesus. The warning part. That's right. Yes, so she's got and the I've got the part. warning coming up. We, yeah, yeah. Right. If we don't look at him as the author of our salvation, mm -hmm. wah, wah, what happens? Yeah, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> or if we try to you be know. the priest, and then you know, because there's yeah. some examples of that. Or what did I put? Him? Uh, where Saul tried to do that when he didn't wait for um, uh, Samuel, and he got into trouble. There was another guy in Kings who offered sacrifices. He became a leper. And there was a third one, but I can't remember. So you can't, don't do the priest stuff because you're negating what Christ did. Yeah. He's the priest. You can, we can't do it. We're not the altar. No. That's okay. So the warning against falling away, Sandy gave away a little bit. 
That's okay. So Hebrews 11, we have much to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you. This is NIV. Um, because you no longer try to understand. Ouch, Hebrews. And this is what Hebrews is for. It was written for the church, the Jewish Christians who had fallen, fallen away. They had gone back to the temple offering sacrifices again. And that's like a step backwards because Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. And this is what the author is saying. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. It's, we've been through this. So this is, this is where this warning comes from. All right. Uh, verse 12. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk is still an infant, mm -hmm. is, is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. And then Hebrews 14, but solid food is for the mature uh, who by consent, by consent use have trained themselves by constant, I'm sorry, oh. Jeanette can't read today, <laughs> by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So that's kind of a big deal there. Um, all right, so mind says no longer try to understand, but it's also been described in other uh, translation as being dull, dull of hearing. Ruh -ruh. Okay, so that's why we're not going into right now more of Melchizedek because it's really cool and interesting. But for this church at this moment, the writer needed to add a little bit more, which we'll find in the next chapter too. Or chapter six, chapter as well. <laughs> All right. So, um, dull of hearing, it's not a problem with the ears, it's a problem with your heart. So, the hearer isn't really interested in what God has to say, and not wanting to hear the word of God points to a genuine spiritual problem. Ouch. So, he's really kind of exposing this. Um, and then also uh, Proverbs kind of brings this up. An unanswered prayer could be kind of a symptom of this. Uh, Proverbs 28.9 uh, says, one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Oh, ouch. All right, and the warning is um, this dull of hearing. The dullness of hearing comes first and then the desire to leave, to, to give up to uh leave 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 jesus leave the leave their what they were taught all right it's kind of like a hardness of heart, heart um, exactly. hardening of your heart as well yeah right? and it, and it shows this hebrew and church has a lack of maturing and the, the thing was is they didn't start that way they started on fire they're like yes jesus i get it it makes sense to me and then all of a sudden like well, I gotta go to temple and offer our stuff. You know, it's like, well, wait a minute. Where did so that come they from? They were comfortable with their old yoke. Right, exactly, exactly. And that's why the chapter before went into the ancient Israel and how they couldn't move on to the promised land mm -hmm. because they wanted to go back to Egypt. And this is what the Hebrew church was doing. Because it was so much better making uh, bricks out of straw. And having your kids being thrown in the Nile, yeah. right? For alligators? I don't think so. Or crocodiles, I'm sorry. Wrong yeah, no. water creature. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's see. He says that by now they should be teaching. So they heard the word, they got it, and now they should be teaching. And so teaching is one of the, one of the, signs that you've reached a maturity and i'll get into that later but a little something something with a little food for thought is um we only really master actually i'm going to sell, say it right now only really master something after we have effectively taught it to someone else so teaching is the final step of learning oh it's kind of cool yeah kind of cool all right and then um the i'm going to kind of explain milk and solid food and um, the Christian, these, the Hebrew Christians should have been on solid food in their diet, at least some. Yeah. 
because uh, it's newborn babies um, desire the pure milk of the word so that you may grow thereby. And that's in 1 Peter 2.2. 2. So that's fine. It's fine to have a Christian should should start on the milk. You, you, you're hungry. You want to learn it. You start cracking over, open your Bible. And that's what these guys maybe started with, but I don't know why they didn't continue. What, you know, why didn't they go, oh, I see the correlations. I get it. It totally points to Jesus, totally points to Jesus, totally points to Jesus. I have a new high priest. I don't need to go there anymore, but they, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to the Hebrew church. So I'm going to go over warnings. Uh, remember the Jeff Foxborough, the, uh, you may be a redneck if, so you may be a baby Christian if, okay. If, uh, okay, so spiritual babies are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So if you're like, oh, they're having miracles at this church. Oh, they're having spiritual healing at this church. Oh, and you're just, you know, you're zigzagging around and checking everything out. Well, you might be a little baby because um, where does your... Where does your focus need to be on God and how you're serving him, how to serve God, right? Not, not following every little miracle, whatever happens. And then babies have their own cribs that they stick to. Spiritual babies have their particular denominations or churches they think of as my church, which is fine. You have your church, but I, I hang out with other Christian you know, sisters, and some of them go to, there's like from different churches. Yeah. But our main focus is God, right? Mm -hmm. He's who we serve. It, yeah. You know, it's not just, well, my church is away, you know. Right. That's an easy one to fall into. Yeah. Um, when, when you're a baby Christian. Right. You tend to think of like your church and stuff right. like that. But, um, but it is true that we're all, you know, those of us that believe in Jesus Christ, right? And, uh, as our Lord and Savior, we're, we're, we're all his children. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then you might be a baby if you get starstruck by Christian celebrities or perhaps your own pastor. We don't serve man. We serve God. All right. Just saying. All right. Paul said in 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 2, where they were arguing I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos. Okay, so he warns us already of that. So be careful of that. Yeah. Um, so what's a good example of that? People going to a church just for a pastor. Yeah, like a mega church because it's yeah. like the cool Because pastor. I only want to see that guy pastor. speak. But when another, when another pastor speaks, then people don't show up to church. So that's right. showing like favoritism. And right. I, I think we all do that, but we have to be really careful about that, right? Yeah, because some it's of them, like, we're not going to hear just that guy speak. We're going to hear God's God's word. God's word, exactly. So it doesn't matter who speaks it, as long as he, the guy who's up there speaking speaks God's word. Yeah, but some of them will cut yeah. out, you know, they'll cut out some, they won't say certain words like mm -hmm. sinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they mm. don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, they just yeah. want to tickle this your ears. This book is full yeah. of uncomfortable and scary yeah. and, and crazy, right? It's, it, all right, just so you know, it's for reals. It's for reals. And uh, you might be a baby if uh, you're spiritually asleep. So little babies need lots of sleep, and um, spiritual babes spend much time spiritually asleep. And you might be a baby if you're fussy and cranky with others. Babies can be cranky and spiritual babies will fuss over any little thing. So do you nitpick doctrine? Oh, well, you know, he drinks wine, so that's not, you know, or they have alcohol yeah. or, you know, you don't you know, make the sign of the cross in the right way or you don't even make the sign of the cross, you know. <laughs> and they nitpick about little goofy things and it's just like, you know, stop it, stop it. Yeah. Really, because we're yeah. here to spread God's salvation. We're here to serve others. How is that serving, right? Put that litmus test. How are you serving? Yeah. All right. Uh, you might be a baby if uh, you're not skilled in the word. Uh, so we don't expect 
the brand new Christian to be skilled in the word, but those who have been here for a while, reading your Bible, reading your Bible, going to Bible studies, you're, it starts to make sense to you. And it, you, it's like your world becomes bigger once you, you're like, that's, we're blown away when we, we go through this and we're like, no, oh, cause I got that's only three sentences. And oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, we get all excited about it. And then, um, and you become skilled. Yeah. Like, Jeanette yeah. Said. and like la yeah, uh, our, our last life session, Sandy was teaching you, if people say this, you can refute them with this. She was teaching us how, what that looks like, how we might be able to say that to somebody. That is huge. If somebody had taught me when I was a lot younger, wow, you know, watch out world, here comes you. <laughs> that, I have to wait till now. <laughs> All right, and might be a baby if, um, uh, your senses, which is your being able to reason between good and evil. If you can't exercise and use discernment, then you might be a baby. Yeah. All right. And discernment comes with, comes with maturity. Yeah, with maturity yeah. too. Yeah. And um, having your spiritual antennas up. Huh. Yeah. And yeah. so this is just kind of a thing to think about. These Christians demonst demonstrate. So the Hebrew Christians demonstrated immaturity by their lack of discernment between good and evil and in their contemplation of giving up with Jesus. The mature Christian is marked by their discernment and their unshakable commitment to Jesus, yeah? And final baby thought, babies put anything in their mouth. <laughs> so spiritual babies are weak in discernment and will accept any kind of spiritual food. So if you're if you're not like the Bereans where you're like, wait a minute, where's that say that in the Bible? I don't know about that. And you and you check it. And that's what the mature Christians do. You don't just, you know, you know. So yeah, yeah be, the discernment's huge, huge yeah. sign of maturity. Yeah. And then finally I'm gonna leave you with senses. Because at the end, it talks about this discernment and it's being able to sense stuff. So I want you to think spiritual senses, being able to uh, refute by using your spiritual senses. And okay. that's the Holy Spirit, actually. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, so sense of taste. Uh, and these are all scriptural, scriptural based. If indeed you have tasted that, tasted that the Lord is gracious. And that's 1 Peter 2, 3. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 34, 8. And spiritual sense of hearing is, um, and your soul, oh wait, wait, hear and your soul shall live. Isaiah 55, 3. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelation there it is right 2, there. 7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Spiritual sense of sight. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. And that's Psalms 119, 18, verse 18. Mm -hmm. The eyes of your understanding, heart, uh, being enlightened. So heart in parentheses. That's from Ephesians 1:18, having the spiritual sense of smell. He shall be of quick scent in the fear of the Lord. Isaiah 11, 3. Mm -hmm. And then I am full, having received from you a sweet smelling aroma, Philippians 4, 18. And finally, the spiritual sense of touch or feeling because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord, 2 Kings 2, or 22, 19. And the hardening of their heart who became past feeling have given themselves over to licentiousness. It's a hard word for me to say. Kind of like cinnamon. I got to say it slow. Ephesians 4, 18, 19. So that's, mm. that's Hebrews 5. Yeah. And that's great. Right. Yeah, you get, you get an idea of the writer is like, hey, guys, get with it. He's talking to this church. And, and it could happen. And, you know, we've seen churches who are like, well, we'll just take out this page of the Bible. You don't need that. Yeah. God doesn't really, you know, yeah. do that. But no, you can't. You can't. I mean, because the Bible is like, oh, it's for, you know, good people and stuff. But it, the models, Aaron himself, God appointed him high priest. He was so much a man 
that as soon as Moses was up in the mountain, he formed this idol of a golden calf and people mm -hmm. were worshiping it, having wild sex in front of it, you know, doing like they did in Egypt, you know, when Moses was gone for a few days, yeah. right? I would say they were spiritually dull of hearing. Yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely spiritually so dull of hearing. They just didn't slow down enough to, I mean, they just were always like, they were like total babies, right? Because mm -hmm. they were like, eh, let me have another candy. You know, let me, let me. Yeah, they had like to the constantly ADHD thing. be, yeah, what do you have to do? Mom, what do you have for me next? What's next? Yeah. What's next? Oh, so, you know the kids who you give them a coloring book and they take a one crayon and they yeah, yeah. And then they're done with the book. Yeah. And then all of them is scribble. Yeah. So that would be spiritually dull of hearing. Yeah. Um, so I think what Jeanette, you know, I was thinking about when, when you did your, your senses, your, your, your five senses at, at the end is that, um, yeah, that is definitely the Holy Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit who gives us that discernment that she's talking about. And so if we truly believe that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith, and um, that he's our Lord and Savior, then we immediately have access to all those senses. They're there mm -hmm. for us. We just have to understand that you have access to that. Yes. And you do have access to that. So you kind of, we kind of have to claim that. We have to use it. Right. So first we have to recognize we, it, remember, um, I mean, Jesus has all power. We have access to these senses. Right. So we have to, we just have to use them. We have to claim them and, and, and use them. Yeah. And if you're having trouble, you pray. Remember that one guy mm -hmm. who was like, we Jesus, ask God. help me in my unbelief. Absolutely. So we, if we have a little a, a part that we're having trouble with, tell God, Hey, mm -hmm. help me. I, I'm struggling here. I, mm -hmm. you know, this is a speed bump for me. Help me God. That's exactly. Just be honest. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, good. That's Thank awesome. you. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad it's who knew? Say, you had a lot of important things who to say about Hebrews that. Who knew was so amazing, I right? Know. It's just great. And I can't wait till we get to seven, till we really get into, I really want to do the research on. Yeah, <laughs> Melchizedek, it's going to be, it's mind-blowing. Mind what, it is mind-blowing. What Sandy already presented is pretty mind-blowing, but once we get into it, you'll be like, yeah. no, uh-uh. Because it is. It's like a mystery guy, and I thought it was Jesus Christ incarnate, but it, you it know, totally it's obviously, points to Jesus. It totally points to Jesus. It's obviously not Jesus incarnate, but it is so exemplary mm -hmm. of, of who Jesus is. Right. So... And but had, anyway, still want to know where this guy came from, though. Yes, yeah, had no so, lines or no connection yeah. to Abraham at all, besides that he just met up with yeah. him and all these kings. Yep. Yeah. After yeah. this, uh, after and, this and war, why, you know, God chose to just kind of model that it's a royal, everlasting priesthood. So, but anyway, we'll find out. Hang yeah. out with us. On so Thursday. on Thursday, yeah, at OCCC dot or yeah, OCCC dot church. Uh, 7 30 a.m thursday morning and um it's been really fun we've had some really cool visitors right from oh. from all over the place now yeah. and, and it's really neat to just come in we'd love to hear what you have to say yeah. um you can download the study guide too same place you've um, pretty much found us here or yeah go to that site same site and uh, download the, the study if you want to like an in-depth study with yourself and the holy spirit you know bible yeah. And just go for it, and then tell us what tell us what you uh, have to say Thursday morning. All right, you guys. Uh, yep. Thank okay. you so much. Mm -hmm. We'll see you all Thursday. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Bye bye. And.